Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another sort of weekly-ish reading vlog. It depends how much work I'm doing uh, and how much like life I'm living I suppose. Uh, I'm currently just chilling at home and reading The Magician's Nephew by C.S. Lewis and making a uh, vegan sh shepherd's pie or cottage pie. I don't think it matters. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Yeah, I should probably show you that in a bit. Cool. Damn it, Charles is a possum. It is ready. I topped it with some uh, ba uh, like fake oniony bacony bit. I topped it with some little onions, dried crispy onions. Damn, bro, it's crazy. It's like the apocalypse out there. Oh, it's coming in my face. That's what she said. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, young man. Hey. You're watching Channel 36's Power News Biggie's giving me his judgy judgy look because I just got back from the shops and he wants to know if there's anything for you, don't you Biggie? Anything for Biggie? Should we have a look? Biggie, we got you some Sheba with salmon. This is the only animal product in this house, Biggie. Apart from you, you're an animal product. Mmm, so, flatbreads and tzatziki. Homemade and I'm watching PewDiePie. Play Minecraft. Out of focus. There he is. What big you up? You can keep cleaning. I'm just reading my book. Saturday the 3rd of August uh, I haven't apparently I haven't updated my vlog for a while to be honest it's, I'm so stressed at the moment We're just trying to keep really really busy with work because not only am I just like working all the time but I also don't have any money which kind of sucks so I need to work even harder than I'm currently working to try and get some money so I've been up all night it's now quarter past eight in the morning and uh, I'm probably going to go to Oxford to go and see Bex, to be honest. So I've kind of packed up my stuff and whatnot. She's not even awake yet, so uh, I'm just carrying on being productive. I finished reading The Dark Half. It was very good. Uh, I filmed a full review of that, so I guess I'll link to that below. Because it's updated, uploaded and stuff. So even if I haven't published it yet, you can go and check out that link. Uh, and then I have some other books to update you on as well. So um, I read... The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, which I'm going to be doing a full review of. Basically, I read this because the movies recently came onto Netflix, and me and Bex, or Bex and I, should I say, enjoyed watching them. Uh, she, she was a big fan of the books and the movies from back in the day. 
I'd never seen them, never read the books, and the movies are pretty good. So I picked this up from a charity shop to give it a read, and yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I gave it like a 4 out of 5, but thinking back, it's probably like a 4.5 to be honest. What I did think it was, was that, like, Su Suzanne Collins' writing style was quite, almost like quite vanilla, so it didn't really stand out or anything, but the plot itself and the world building is what's really good, so I feel as though any YA writer worth their salt could have written the book, but it's, it's the plot and this kind of, this dystopian world which is the genius. I do, I would like to have seen more time spent in the arena, um, but I kind of get why we have all this world building and whatnot. The only thing I am worried about is that the first movie was my favourite movie, and then I thought it just kind of went downhill from there. So I'm not particularly excited about reading the rest of this trilogy. But I'm probably going to do like a, a, a review video where I review every book in the trilogy. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. I also posted my review of this on Goodreads like two hours ago. And bearing in mind it's like the middle of the night for America as well as the UK. Let me see. Uh, it was on 10 likes my review last time I saw. Which is like... 10 times as many likes as my reviews normally get and actually it's, it's on course to be my most popular review which is kind of cool. Uh, then I read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I also read, did I update you guys on this? I can't remember. I also read The Magician's Nephew. The Magician's Nephew was better, that was a 4 star. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe was a 3.5 stars. I actually started reading this as a kid and then DNF'd it because I, I just wasn't getting into it and uh, yeah I mean it was alright. Uh, lots of you know, all the religious stuff and whatnot, and kind of slow, and actually I'm now reading The Horse and His Boy, and this is awful, so this one's like a 2 out of 5, maybe a 2.5 out of 5 now, because it started to pick up a bit, but it's just not good, guys, I, I'm, I'm a little bit worried, because it started so strongly, this series, and I've never read it before, so I don't really know what to expect. And just the fact, this has been like my experience of the Hunger Games movies, where the first one was the best, and the second one wasn't as good, and then the third one, this really isn't very good. And I still have four more books to read, so that's not good. But uh, yeah, I am cracking on with them. Sorry if I'm not making much sense at the moment, I'm very tired. I also read Small Steps by Louis Sakar, and this is like a sequel to Holes. It doesn't follow Stanley Yelnats though, it follows Armpit. And uh, he's got himself a job, digging holes of all things. And then basically his friend comes up with this like money making scheme where they're gonna effectively become ticket touts. So they, they go ahead with this plan and obviously it backfires in many different ways. And then we have like a quite a well known like fictional singer celebrity. She's like a teen singer celebrity. And Armpit ends up meeting her. Hello. And uh, yeah, there's just loads, it deals with loads of different stuff in here, like kind of inherent racism, because uh, Armpit's a, a black kid, and, um, you know, he's just having to deal with that. He also lives next door to a little girl with cerebral palsy, I think it is, and um, he kind of takes a shine to her and really looks after her, and he actually takes her to this concert as well, and she kind of looks up to him as like a bit of a hero, and that was a, just, I really like that relationship, just this sort of teenage boy and what 11 12 year old girl and they're just friends and they're you know it was just so wholesome uh, but there is also like attempted murder in this as well so <laughs> there's a bit of everything I mean it's sort of in between like middle grade and YA I guess I mean it's similar to Holes if you liked Holes you're gonna like Small Steps I actually arguably like Small Steps more because what I liked about Holes was this disciplinary camp thing uh, and then you know, then that book kind of keeps jumping into the past to this other timeline and it does make sense and they, they all come together in the end but I just wasn't a particular fan of that other timeline whereas this is all just set in the now and so there was less jumping to and fro and so yeah I was down with that. I gave this a 5 out of 5, this was incredible. Um, yeah, uh, I'm real, like I've turned into a real Louis Sackart fan, I've read this and Holes and both of them were excellent. And like, even before picking this one up, I determined I was going to read everything that he'd written. And this has just like solidified it for me. And again, as you can see, I did lots of tabbing of this one. So there will be a full review of this coming soon too. Yo, oh, I am tired and hung over. So what ended up happening is like, I couldn't sleep on uh, Friday. So I stayed up all night and I was going to go to Oxford. But then that didn't happen, so then I got really drunk and then slept really well. So today is Sunday and um, yeah, I've done a bit of editing. I finished reading The Horse and His Boy 
by C.S. Lewis and it was really not good at all. I gave it a 2 out of 5. It was one of those where I was just reading it for the sake of reading in the end. Like, didn't care about any of the characters. The plot, basically a horse, a talking horse and a boy run away. I also hate talking animals in general and there are lots of them in Narnia but it's a trope I've never really got on with but uh, so yeah he ran, the boy ran away with this horse then there was a big battle and then he turned out that he was the twin brother of the king and that was it and it took 200 pages to do that and it just what like it wasn't a good story which is what I think the Narnia books need to be like you know, the first and the second one, they were both pretty good stories in their own right, whereas this one was just sort of dull and tedious and felt like work reading it. But now I am reading The Long Earth by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter, and I've literally, like, I've only just started it today. And I've not read any of these collaborations of the two of them together, but I am a big Pratchett fan. And he's my most read author. I think I've read like 60 of his books or something. So I thought I'd give these a try when I saw a box set of them and I'm enjoying it so far. There's a, a, a drinks machine who is the first robot to convince a jury that it's uh, a person. And he did that not by arguing that he was human, but by saying that he was uh, a, a Buddhist monk from Tibet who got reincarnated into the computer at the precise moment it was first turned on, which is very Terry Pratchett. And yet it's like, it's like the parallel Earth theories, from what I understand. So they're going to go off on a on a trip to the long Earth, and he's described the way these different, similar but different Earths work together as being like uh, if you get a pack of cards, and it's like being able to you know shuffle your way through the cards and go to the next card. So and they're now going to go to a, a world that's the equivalent of a million cards away from our own. So and that is the long Earth. And uh, also I've been watching people play. Minecraft, even though I've never played Minecraft, it's really making me want to play it though. Maybe I will. I am back home and I've just made these uh, vegan like popcorn chicken made with seitan and I'm going to enjoy it with this barbecue sauce. What are you doing? <laughs> My kitchen, apart from being weirdly orange in this light, why is it this colour? How odd. It smells because I've just made this chilli sauce. So I'm just waiting for that to cool off and then I'm going to give it a try. But it looks quite nice. Look at that. Cat's down here, aren't you, Biggie? Hey? Who are you up to today? Yeah? Should we give you some treats? Come on. Hello. Yes, Biggie, what's this then? Nom 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 nom. You're getting very close to the camera. The internet people aren't going to be able to see you, are they? Should we try and do your trick? Hang on, I've got to try and get one out. You ready? Good boy. Let's do that again. Ready? You're good at this. All right, let's give you a few more. Oh, that's way too many. Okay, so I am back from Oxford. While I was there, we made really delicious uh, pizza, vegan pizza with a Greek salad. I'll put some footage in here. A little bit of salt. We need some salt. Yeah, there's some salt at the side. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I was doing Salt Bay. Have you never seen Salt Bay? I think this has been a success. Uh, this This video... By the way, this is going on my vegan channel, and this is Dane and Bex make vegan pizza and Greek salad. And uh, we, f we basically we filmed that for a video for uh, Dane's vegan journey on YouTube, so link to that below. Subscribe to that if you haven't already, and you can see what food we ate. So that was nice. I also got lots of reading done. I'm right at the end of Stoner by uh, William... He's the guy... He's John Williams, that's it. Isn't it? The same, he's got the same name as the guy who did all the music for Star Wars. So yeah, John Williams, Stoner. And uh, 
It's because he's William Stoner. That's why the character is William Stoner. But yeah, I'm about 25, 30 pages away from that. I've been reading it as kind of an informal buddy read with Mara from Books Like Woe. And it's fantastic. It's a really good book. And I'm going to finish it tonight. Probably not going to do a, a review of it, but um, certainly I will be talking about it. Um, and then I've been reading the, the Long Earth by Stephen Baxter and Terry Pratchett. And this is incredible. I mean, you can see how many tabs I put in this. I'm definitely doing a review of this. And uh, basically, human like humanity uncovers the ability to like step between different versions of the Earth. And so it's almost like, you know, the many universe theory. And you can only step in one direction or the other. And all of these other Earths don't have people on. And so people are starting to go there to, like, colonise them and stuff. But, for example, instantly the price of gold drops to nothing. Because everyone's gone and mined all the gold and brought it back. There are also problems caused with, like, you can't take uh, anything with iron in over. And then... You know, each universe is different, like each world is different. So you've got one, two, three, etc. But it takes time to cycle through them all. So if you want to go to universe 1200, that's going to take you a few days of traveling, you know? And uh, yeah, it's just really, like, it does a really good job of exploring how we would react to that. So, for example, people like terrorists are using it because what they'll do is they'll go into the other world, make their way straight into the middle of where the Houses of Parliament are, jump back into our world and explode a bomb, you know? And uh, so th it's really well done, I think, with all of these different ideas coming together. And I just can't wait to talk about the full thing. So I shall talk about that soon. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Cool. I'm cooking like a burger hash thing while uh, actually I've just been editing videos for my vegan cooking channel. Bex and I made some delicious pizza. Uh, I've told you about this. So yeah, go through and check that out. Let's add the final touches to this as well. Tomato sauce. Half a cup of tomato sauce. A lot of tomato ketchup. Right, here we go. In it goes. Whee! I don't know why I made that noise. Now we have it, a burger hash. So I'm just gonna, what does it say now? Simmer for five minutes or until hot and then serve. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks kind of unhealthy with all that tomato ketchup in it, but whatever. And look at it, it's bulging. Can you see it bulging? That's weird. All right, it is Wednesday. I'm currently making a little bit of food. I finished reading this in bed last night, which is Stoner by John Williams. This is pretty much like the perfect novel. It follows this guy called uh, William Stoner from his birth through to his death. And he kind of starts out, he's born in like the early 1900s, son of a farmer. Uh, his kind of family save up to send him off to university and he becomes a lecturer. And it's a very tragic novel. He has quite an unfulfilling life, although he loves his teaching. Uh, his wife and his daughter, they all have kind of pretty strained relationships. Uh, he has some like professional um, like arguments over a particular student and he's in the right as well but by like maintaining his morals and his beliefs he kind of puts himself into a bad corner basically he ends up getting you know somebody higher up in the university than him becomes his enemy and so yeah it's really tragic all the way through especially the ending was very sad but to me like I say it's pretty much the perfect novel I, I, can't, I can't fault it which is why I have to give it a 5 out of 5 uh, and I will be talking about it some more in my wrap up I don't think I'm going to do a full review but this is definitely a book I might reread one day so yeah and now I'm just coming to the end of The Long Earth by Terry Pratchett, uh, Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. I don't want to give a full review of this because I'm going to do one because it's incredible. This is another 5 out of 5. Just some of the ideas behind it. It's one of those where the authors have taken the idea that's the setting of the book and like really worked through to its obvious or its like natural conclusions. So for example, people can hop between worlds all of a sudden so the price of gold just plummets because people are bringing back all this gold and um some of the evolutionary ideas are in here are great there's even like a nod to dunbar's number which is robin dunbar i think he's an evolutionary anthropologist or something and uh his theory is that you can only have a maximum of 150 friends like as soon as you're trying to have more friends than that you lose friends because you need to expend a certain amount of energy to keep up with them all so yeah really good stuff and then after that i'm gonna read prince caspian by c.s lewis i'm bringing this back out it was gonna be a bedtime book because the horse and his boy was so bad but i started reading it in bed last night and it's not terrible so i think i can still read this one as a main book all right i'm gonna go sort my food 
sleepy cat much. Yeah. I am a very tired human being. It's currently it's five past twelve in the afternoon. I have not been to bed and now I'm just trying to power through. I mean actually I have a client call at half one and then I have a doctor's appointment at 4.20 because I'm getting another ear infection and I get ear infections all the time and it's horrible. So I need to mention, I keep getting these. Please help me to stop getting these. Anyway, I've finished some reading. So I finished reading, oops. So I finished reading The Long Earth by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. I was right at the end of it in my last update. So no surprise that I've finished that. What is a surprise is that I've finished two more books since then. First of all, I read Prince Caspian by C.S. Lewis. This is book number four in the Narnia series. And then I read The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis, book number five. Uh, and yeah, I basically, the one I read before these two was The Horse and His Boy, and I thought that was awful and gave that a two star. In Prince Caspian, uh, we do get some new characters, but we also get like the characters from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe back, and so it kind of made it more presentable. And although there was a lot more lore about the land, it wasn't overwhelming, didn't feel info dumpy or anything like that. So I was pretty much on board with that, you know. So I gave that a 4 out of 5. The Voyage of the Dawn tried to slow down a little bit, but there were also some cool bits in it that almost reminded me of, like, The Odyssey by Homer. And I'm sure that probably wasn't deliberate as well. So yeah, I enjoyed it not as much as Prince Caspian, but I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I don't want to say too much about either of these books, because I've tabbed them all out to do full. Oh, that's so annoying. It cut out just as I was finishing up what I was saying there. So I've since gone for a shower, so my hair might be a bit frothy and uh, frizzy. But yeah, I finished reading The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, and yeah, it was all right. And so now I need to decide what I'm going to read next. And I think I'm going to go for this. Uh, so I really enjoyed reading The Long Earth. And so as it's coming up to the weekend here, I thought I might start The Long War and this will probably keep me going because uh, it's what, it's 500 odd pages. So the last one was 410 and took me a fair, fair old while. But I mean, it's that basically, I don't know, this is my current TBR pile. So it's that, basically, yeah. I mean, I can either skimp out and read another Narnia book I'm starting to lose my mind with them a bit or I can do this 500 page Pratchett or I can take on one of these kings but either way either of those last two are going to be a, a hell of an undertaking but what the hey we're going to start it see how we get on plus I've almost finished two recipe books I think I have three recipes to try from one and four from another so that's pretty cool Relationship that got microbiome. I made this is um, like a portobello mushroom soup and then with homemade croutons. I've tried the croutons, they are so good, you wouldn't believe it. Hello, oh, I feel terrible, so hence I've built a den in the living room. I did go to the doctors yesterday, and yes, I do have another ear infection. I get them lots. This guy, though, at least seems to be like he knows what he's doing in terms of trying to fix them so now I've stopped pinging computer so now I've got eardrops to go in my ear uh, also oral antibiotics anti sorry it's really confusing today and then after that I have to use this cream because basically I, I get eczema which I used to get on my knees apparently I get that in my ear and then that's what causes the infections uh, so yeah and because of that the entire side of my face feels like it's swelled up. I can't really chew at the moment because it's hurting into my teeth and my ear in particular is very bad. And so, yeah, I've also slept for 16 hours because apparently my body needed sleep. So that is where I'm at. But on the plus side, I've started reading The Long War. Here it is. I'm about 70 odd pages in. It's not as good as the first one, but then I do have a massive headache. So maybe I'm just not focusing on it as well. Who knows? I tried to make some soup earlier, which I showed you. The soup, the flavor was nice, but the texture was weird. And it's because of one of the ingredients. It wanted me to put like vegetable stock in. And so it just went a bit gravy like. So I think if I were to make it again, I'd deviate from the recipe and I'd put like vegan cream in instead. So because I didn't really enjoy it, I didn't really eat it, I ate the croutons because the croutons are bomb.com. And now I'm going to try and make 
Chinese vegetable lo mein with tofu. And uh, that's going to pretty much bring me up to the end of this vlog, I think, because we're up to about 20 minutes or so, and there's going to be some good stuff happening this weekend, including the Desperate Carnival down the road. So hopefully I feel a little better. But as always, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.